Hey, hey. Hello. Yeah, Emily, um, the two, two of the three issues that we're going to touch on triage today, uh, I think one of the old issues. Um, so it's 176 and 177. So. All right, hold on, I'm going to pull them up. If you remember the context of these. Oh, that, that sounds like they're mine. Yep. <laughs> oh, 176? And 177. <clears throat> All right, let me refresh what I was thinking when I opened them. It's a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it's old like now. Giving, giving you the heads up <laughs> so that you could spend like five minutes trying to remember. <laughs> um, all right. Okay, I remember 176. Almost like it was yesterday. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I know there was uh, the other link PR um, issue was on uh, the reporting process or like the templates that you created, right? So does that, does that address that? I, I think the PR for adding the security resources um, is, I think that closes that issue out because I had asked whether yeah. or not there was anything else outstanding. So I think we can just close it. Okay. Does this cover the same thing or it covers a bit something broader? The CVE vulnerabilities, I'm still reading it. Sorry, I, I write long text. At least early on, I did. <laughs> Everyone, just waiting a couple of minutes for people to join in. I'm going to put in the meeting notes as usual. OK, I remember 177 now, and I know kind of the outcome of it. And I believe that it is remediated with that PR. OK, with the templates PR. Yeah, because I talked to Chris about this not too long ago. So I think we are good. Okay. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Just putting the meeting notes in the chat. We need scribes today. So if anyone can volunteer, that would be awesome. I closed 177. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to add the link to it just so that we keep track of it. No, that's not the right one. It's just the CN, the TOC pull request. What? We'll figure this out later. Don't worry about it. Okay. Using <laughs> myself. Hey, everyone. Just gonna put the meeting notes in again. Um, we need a scribe today. If anyone can sign up for that, that would be awesome. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, Axel. Um, last 
point that we unfortunately lost work because they wanted to move to another organization um, or we're just picking hey, Mark, up some extra work on, because just the volume is what I was on. talking about. This is a big, big background. in demand um, in critical space, not only for our company, but 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 in, in many other organizations. Um, and I know it can be can be difficult um, at times to, to be in that, that position. So just a, a big thank you as well. Mark, I don't know if you might just chime in with any other closing thoughts before we wrap up today. Hey, Mark. Uh, I, I do, yeah, thank you. So, All right. um, someone has uh, admin here. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say if someone has admin, maybe they can read uh, Mark. Uh, I, I can't read John with admin. A lot of questions I don't have, have it right off the bat. Uh, some of you may not feel comfortable asking, which is. Uh, one second. I don't to that. Reach out to, to Robert if you have anything specific or direct. Um, I don't think I've actually ever heard it come out so loud and clear more in this, in a context uh, like the this. The second thing I will say, and probably the more important thing, kind of more Marissa kicked off and, and, and just in general, I think this is for me the most important. Thanks, apologies. We are working right. on resolving this. Our company has continued. Brandon will rejoin us shortly. Uh, very, right. Let's in see. a very big way in our I mean, program. Abuse my power uh, here. We talked about this. Uh, not abuse. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I mean exercise. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so wait, let me let me backtrack. Um, put the notes in the, the chat. Uh, we have a pretty short agenda today, so so we'll see how things come along. Um, we should get some time back. So uh, let's get started. So as usual, um, this meeting is being recorded. Um. Advised by um, CNCF Code of Conduct as well as the, the Tax Security Code of Conduct. Um, this will be recorded and uploaded to YouTube at a later date. Um, and we need um, scribes. Do we have scribes? Thank you, Ash, for, for volunteering to scribe. Uh, and if you have any updates, um, please put in your name uh, in the attendance. Um, put a note if you have any update or you want to talk about anything. Uh, either during the update or in today's agenda. Cool. So <clears throat> let's get started. Um, so first, let me just subture new members. Do we have any new, new folks on the call that want to introduce themselves? Uh, I think it looks like everyone's... Um, I've seen everyone before, <laughs> so I think we don't have new members today. Um, Okay, so triage of content issues. So this is um, just a reminder for those that um, were not around when this was introduced. Uh, basically at the start of each um, working session meeting, we spend like five, 10 minutes on, on triaging certain issues. Today, we have uh, three issues that we'll be taking a quick look at. Um, share screen. Um, so, Emily, I managed to, to walk through one or two of them before while the call was starting, so it's going to hopefully keep it short. So these three are up for triage, uh, utilization of security reviews as initial secure settings for projects. Uh, I think the idea here was to use the output of um, security reviews to kind of um, provide a, a starting point for uh, security documents for projects. Um, so. This is a pretty old issue, it hasn't um, had any traffic for a while. Um, Emily, do you want to talk a little bit about it? Absolutely. So this issue came out of my first KubeCon um, and talking with Justin Cormack and kind of understanding a little bit more, well, not first KubeCon, a while ago, but trying to understand more about the lack of security faults that exist within a lot of the cloud native projects. Um, and one of the ways that we had brainstormed during one of the diversity lunches was being able as part of our existing security view and security assessment process to provide or to assist projects with developing security documentation and secure configurations for their applications and their uh, projects. So we kind 
kind of have a few other initiatives around this area. There's some work uh, from the surveys that we've done about secure defaults. This is one way that we could potentially do that. And um, generally speaking, the Security Pals program has the capabilities to assist projects in identifying areas, but not quite to the level of granularity of like, here's the secure configuration within the documentation, and you actually would have to hunt for the less secure configurations. So this is just the idea. If the group is not interested in pursuing this at this time, we can close it, drop it in the backlog. We've got lots of other projects that are also equally as important and interesting. So let me just bring up that secure defaults issue as well. Um, so I, I think what, what we'll do at this point is we'll link the, this issue to the, to the other one. And as usual, what happens with most of our triage, um, uh, triage processes is we're gonna paste this into the general uh, tech security chat for some extra feedback. If we don't get any reinvigorated interest um, from the group within like a week or two, we just close it up. And, but we make sure we have it documented to any of the current ongoing. Uh, ongoing issues. So let's just think here. So we don't miss it. Okay. Um, this one CVE for vulnerabilities found during security reviews and audit. Um, we had a discussion five minutes before the call started. Um, so I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, basically, this was around like reporting on CVEs. Uh, this is partially addressed by uh, the template, the, the security document templates that we introduced earlier, maybe about a month and a half ago. Um, so this is you know, how to report CVEs and things like that. Um, Emily, since this is the issue, do you wanna chime in a bit more? Yeah, sure. Um, so a lot of this was around um, at a time before GitHub had their uh, security advisories integration and probably about the time that they were looking to become a CVE authority. Uh, so this is very old. Um, but the idea is that when we're performing security reviews, we may come across insecure configurations or vulnerabilities associated with projects for which they don't have a responsible disclosure process. The new security resources section of the repository has great resources to help projects get up and running with what those um, security documentations, embargo, vulnerability disclosure, all of those fun things. So it, it's kind of already met from that perspective. And with the recent updates to the contributor site, from our partners at Tag Contributor Strategy, we now have instructions for teams about how do they manage the GitHub Security Advisories feature as well. So this is pretty much mitigated. The only extra little bit would be how do we apply that within our uh, security review process, which is, is currently discussed. I think there is an active PR or one that was recently closed that introduced this, that security reviews are responsible for following the responsible disclosure process of the project undergoing the review. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Uh, as usual, if you have any comments, um, put it in the issue. We'll post this in the chat as well. Um, assessment listings. Um, create a closed assessment folder to organize assessments. I think this is kind of a, uh, just the ability to have a readme with everything in it. So I think this is still relevant. Um, so for this, it sounds like we would want to, to just bring it up in the community again. I think this is a good first issue. So if anyone knows um, folks that want to um, contribute to the community, or if you yourself want to have like come kind, of, kind of like a quick contribution to the community, uh, this would be a good issue. Sorry, maybe you could just tell a bit more. I mean, maybe I'm the only one who doesn't know much about it, but the assessment thing itself, the assessment process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, that's a lot of depth into this. So maybe I just like give a quick overview. And then um, it's likely that, um, so we will touch on this again, uh, usually at our QCon sessions, uh, talking about what the reviews are, going into a bit more detail. Uh, and we will likely talk about it again after QCon when we get like a new influx of members. 
um, but just a a very high level um you know the the security assessments and reviews kind of started as a way um you know in the project uh the project the, the cncf project process right from sandbox incubation to graduation um the idea was the toc uh, wanted the ability to really have a better assessment of what security is for a particular project um, so this is something that we started. The, the main aim of it was to kind of see where a project is in terms of the entire CNCF ecosystem. Um, so, you know, what are the different things that it, it talks to, how does it fit into the ecosystem, uh, as well as, you know, a look at what the security hygiene of the project is, right? Um, it, is not, it is not a code review, it is not an audit. Um, it is more of to see, you know, does, is there a security process? Uh, are there security incidents that are being handled? Uh, looking at the overall design architecture of, uh, of the project to see whether there are any red flags. Is there like CICD pipeline? Um, are there certain decisions in the design? For example, you know, rewriting a parser or using a library which may not be um, um, using a, a, a weird parsing library or something like that. So just general um, hygiene of a project and also to inform the TOC of, is this project, um, how does this project fit in into the security ecosystem in CNCF? Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think there'll be opportunity for us to, to dig deeper, I think as well as uh, at the coupon session. So if you're interested or, you know, as usual, just reach out to any of us. Cool. So I think that that's it for the, the triage section. So I'm going to stop sharing here. Okay. Um, and let's go on to the next item, which is review other time zones. We don't have that anymore. Uh, TOC meeting updates. Um, do we have anyone that was at a TOC meeting that had any updates worth noting here? I believe Matthew mentioned that uh, build packs was presented during the meeting last week. Uh, I don't think he's on the call right now. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. So yeah, and Andreas was um, presented on behalf of this of the stack. It was a kind of TOC update meeting. So it's just like um, different tags talking about what they did. So we talked about build packs as well as some of the things in the pipeline uh, before coupon. So fun stuff before we get into project, um, get into the agenda, um, project updates, um, different working groups, any, any updates there? So maybe you can start with, um, we'll go from bottom up now since we went top down last time. So cloud native security map. Uh, Ash, do we have any any updates on that with the with the version two landscape? Uh, no, no updates on that right now. We will probably start closer to KubeCon. Um, but do you have any design updates? I think we reached out to the design team as well, right? The CNCF team. Yeah. So so the the ticket and services was marked as resolved, but they didn't contact us. So I I kind of reopened that to see where that goes. Yeah. Thanks. Um, the security controls group. Okay, I think security reviews. Um, I think we just hit the update with build packs. Uh, Parker Studio is finishing. That was an update from Matthew. Um, we are looking to start Argo. We are looking inside the Argo review towards um, after KubeCon, so towards the end of October. So if those that are interested, please put your name down on the ARCO assessment uh, issue. And that should start shortly after KubeCon. Um, uh, for custodian, uh, just to, uh, I've tried to fix a bunch of the uh, items noted in the PR. Uh, there's a few open questions there. So uh, those who have 
uh, contributed to the PR review. Thank you. And uh, hopefully I've addressed the issues, but if there are other uh, issues that remain, I'll try to get to those as soon as possible. Okay, you mentioned open questions. Is this open questions for... Um, A lot for of the... them are for me. Okay, <laughs> all right. Sorry. I just want to make sure that we have... Sorry about that, Emily. <laughs> no worries, I saw the emails. I, they're on my list of things to do. Yeah, all right. Okay, so as long as we, we have we have um, um, continuation of that, make sure we're not blocked. Okay, sounds good. I think next on the list, um, serverless white paper. Anyone with updates? No one? Okay, let's go. Supply chain. I think we have Andres and Michael both on. So any any updates? No updates. Full swing. Awesome. And audio, white paper, audio, audio recording. Any updates there? Nope. Okay, awesome. So let's get right in. Um, let's see whether anyone has any updates that are not on the agenda. Um, Mark, you, I see you have a announcement to make about the IEEE document. Um, do you want to speak to that? Or do you want me to just make an announcement? I, I, I'm assuming you're on two calls. So. No, this time they canceled it. So here I am. Hallelujah. <laughs> awesome. So, hey guys, I missed you. I'd rather be in this meeting. <laughs> so this uh, IEEE standard issued today, it's hot off the presses. Uh, it took forever to do this. It was a bloody slog, to tell you the truth. It's a really hard topic, how to do ethical design in software and systems architectures. This is really focused on autonomous systems, but it really applies across the board. So you, there's a link there. You have to get your enterprise to buy the standard um, I worked on this thing for, for I think, four years. So uh, the extent to which it's going to influence people's design practices really comes down to whether people like in this group uh, find something of use in that. So, you know, I, I encourage you to try to talk somebody into buying it and, and taking a skim to see if there's some things in there that you can, uh, that you can apply in your design principles that'll help with with ethical principles. And some of this has to do with, you know, security and privacy stuff that tends to be more close to the privacy side than the security side, but it's more about our public responsibility as technologists and system architects. And uh, so there's, there's interesting stuff in there, even if in the end, it leaves you scratching your head as to why that text was put in it. So that's my pitch. Do you think it's it's something that's worth uh, maybe doing a short presentation about at one of the next the next um, sessions? I don't know. If people are interested, I'd be willing to to give an overview of it. I'd All love right. to hear more about it, but I mean, I've got an EFF sweatshirt right here, so I'll just say <laughs> there yes. you go. All right, maybe we'll put up a we'll put up a, a message in the in the group. See how many thumbs up we get. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. You bet. Um, okay. Looks like we have no other updates. So also, I just noticed Axel, thank you for volunteering to scribe. Okay, so the first agenda item um, we have is, uh, we only have two today. So the first one is on um, stack meeting schedules. Um, I think to provide some context here, um, uh, I think Andrew's I think it was interesting who brought up that you know some other of the texts are meeting at a little bit of less uh, a bit less frequency. Uh, some of them have taken like a month off, like sabbatical kind of thing, uh, in between. And I think we wanted to figure out, um, you know, what are people's thoughts on this? Um, whether we would like to maybe reduce the frequency or maybe take a couple of weeks or like a, a entire month off. I uh, just like these weekly meetings. Um, Emily, Andres, Ash, um, feel free to chime in. I'm not sure that I missed anything there. Yeah, we've been going steady for quite some time. 
Yeah, we are the most um, active tag. <laughs> so. We are the most active tag. We produced a ton of great material, um, but we also recognize that there has been a lot going on and that we have a ton of ongoing projects. So we want to make sure that we're balancing everybody's willingness to contribute as well as your personal health and well being. So we meet weekly. Um, there's been discussion, like Brandon said, about uh, taking a month off or potentially adjusting the frequency at which we hold these meetings. So we wanted to open up the conversation to the community to get a better understanding of how everybody feels. Do you have trouble making these meetings? Should we reduce the amount of them that we have in a given month? I, I'm, I'm happy to answer. I mean, I haven't been coming to these meetings for very long, as, as people know. However, I find them very interesting and I find I get a lot out of them. Um, I do think once a week gets can get a bit much, even though it's it's only an hour, but you know, it's easy to say that we've got a lot of only an hour meetings here and there. Um I I would be I would be fine if they were slightly reduced, but um I don't know, maybe like three out of four, something like that. I mean I less than that to me feels like it's gonna get too few. And I think there's a lot of interesting stuff coming out of it. So yeah, happy. I'm very interested in hearing other people's opinion. You know, the, the thought process is uh, moving to a bi-weekly, but beyond that is we have all of these kind of other kind of side projects, the security reviews, all of those, right? To me, those take up, you know, instead of having like the full group, having everybody re, re, uh, reconvene to be able to kind of talk about those statuses when there's actually more meaningful time than a week, because usually it takes more than a week to to articulate what happened during that point. So. That's kind of my two cents from uh, from the pop desk here. Yeah, this it's a good this a good point, Bob. Like uh, I think we have you know the supply chain working group, we have the the policy working group as well, um, and most of the folks and the controls working group. So like most of the folks here are kind of like double booked on at least one other one. Um, um, a, a quick uh, thought from my end, because I know um, I don't want to be the contrarian, but one, one thing I, I, I do like about the fact that it is fairly frequent is I can miss a meeting and not feel like I've missed out on a whole lot. So, I mean, another thought is maybe just saying, hey, maybe like we have an hour long meeting once every X weeks, but maybe like a you know, a 15 minute check-in or a 30 minute check-in. So I think that's, those things are still, I think, useful. Cause even if I miss one check-in, it's not like I've missed a, a whole lot. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I think one thing that, that we've tried to kind of do from the start, although maybe not as successfully is that we've tried to make the operation of the, the tech not relying on meetings um so obviously i think certain things are easier on meetings but, and like we have presentations and stuff like that as well so pace and cadence aside i i do feel we could use a a month off to regroup recharge come back with with that energy we should probably have a at least one meeting following up to kubecon to talk about what we learned there, how the cloud native security can go, but maybe we can plan after that to take four or six weeks, possibly. Call it our end of year. So I'm hearing a bunch of different things. Um, I'm all about trying something new, trying it once and then iterating. Cause you know, that's kind of like agile. Um, so I think that we should pick something to try it and see how we feel. Um, I think taking a month off is a good idea, but I also recognize that there are a lot of folks that get hyped up about KubeCon and want to jump on a call with the security group. I mean, that's, that's one of the ways that we get a lot of our membership. So if it's a balance between every other week for six weeks and then we reassess how we like that, or if it's three out of four in a given month. Um, and keep in mind that we do have several key holidays coming up across the world. So we wanna be respectful of everybody's um, various vacations and holiday leave. Maybe we can do two weeks in November and then we can take December off. <laughs> 
I really like the sound of three out of four more than every three weeks. So like meeting every Wednesday, the first three weeks of the month, taking a week off and maybe we just like spread out that month off. Make sure like there's not a big pull the plug. I have a question actually, because I, I know I struggle with the CNCF calendar a little bit. Um, how do like I'm I'm just thinking if we have like three out of four right, um is that a good way to like does everyone have, uh somehow tracking just the 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 security tech events, or do you have to add the entire CNCF calendar to your calendar? I added my own custom event. Okay. Yeah. So I, I just, I just thinking like, I think that's, that's what I did as well. Uh, so I think it could be a little bit tricky. Yep. It's, me too. Yeah. I also do that. I, I put something in chat, but didn't speak up. I'd rather prefer, I kind of like every other week or twice a month, three out of four just feels like a lot, mm -hmm. but I know we have to pick something and, and go from there. I think that's a good idea. Pick. Yeah. Well, I think three out of four about half the time is three out of five, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess one of the things I'm trying to optimize for is all the other meetings I need to attend. And and so if it's, you know, three out of um out of three in a month, then I can't do any other alternating recurring meeting. Mm -hmm. Whereas within every other week, I can insert other recurring meetings in the time in that time slot. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. But I'm I'm willing to try whatever the majority wants to go for. I think what we can do is I think we we have I think three options right there on the table now three or four options. Um, I think we should probably make a poll, put it in the channel, see what people think and then experiment with it. I think that's most likely what we can do. I Last that. option could be just meeting format. So official meeting bi-weekly and the week in between is like a social or a office hours. Come talk to other security people if you want, but it's not a, a meeting per se. I also like the idea of like a working meeting for the other every other where we like get some GitHub issues done or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's close to Michael's check-in idea, which I think I found more convincing than my three out of four idea when I heard it. All right. So it sounds like to me, we have a bunch of different options. Who's going to take the action to consolidate all the options and generate a poll in the Slack channel? Don't everybody jump at once. Yeah, I okay, know you all want to do it. <laughs> yes. So we have, we have what the check-in, the month off and the every other week playing every other week every other yeah, week yeah with... every other week okay can we right. add the uh the brandon Lum ask me anything no Is that not the... <laughs> <laughs> i thought that was a concert series i'm sorry uh -oh. oh wait, wait that's a special <laughs> we were gonna charge for that <laughs> selling tickets it's not ten dollars <laughs> i'd show up So yeah, it sounds like those are the options. Um, if you can get that poll in the channel and let it, and well, I'll pay attention to when it's posted. We'll send an email out to the mailing list as well. So folks can jump in there and respond. Awesome. Sounds like we have a plan. Okay, Axel. Cool. So um, other agenda item was on new technique nomination. So as you know, it's been a while since we've, uh, we've had new techniques. Um, you know, given that uh, recently around I, I have, have um, you know, assumed the chair positions. They were we, elevated. <laughs> yeah, so um, we will need as, as well as, as the group is growing, right? Um, I think it will, we see the, the need for additional leadership to help you know, expand on the scope of what we do and also making sure that new members and our existing members feel like their voices are heard and that they feel empowered to you know do great work um so we want to talk about tl nomination um in the past uh, this has been done uh, through uh 
so called like chair nomination. Um, and we, we, the, the, there are two parts of this. So one is we want to document the process, we do the TR nomination. Number two is we want to kind of open up the TR nomination um, process to have community nominations as well. Um, so we are introducing this idea of community nominations where uh, communities, um, community members nominate uh, who they think would be good TLs uh, together with the justification. And based on the nomination, uh, the chairs would, um, you know, pick based on, you know, the number of nominations, um, you know, different, a bunch of different requirements, whether they would fit the role, they, they have the uh, skill set to meet the role, uh, as well as, you know, TOC has to also approve. Um, so the idea is the community comes out of nominations, um, um, you know, these get brought to the leadership and to the TOC. At the end of it, we um, provide some data about, you know, what happened. You know, the, the idea is we want to provide um, more transparency into the process, as well as, you know, for members of community to, to, um, to influence the decision. So, um, Emily, do you want to share that? Yeah, PR you have? I, I actually, uh, because it was merged in before the meeting, um, I posted it in the chat. Um, so we went through and we documented it. Um, we talked through about what a, what were the previous tech lead nominations like? What were some of those requirements? Um, and we wanted to make sure that we were very transparent with everybody to understand what it is that we're looking for, as well as understand where the CNCF is headed. So the CNCF has been doing a lot of changes as of late and trying to drive more diversity across the community. And we want to make sure that we're, we're standing true with the CNCF and their goals and initiatives and efforts. So we, we took the time, we went through and we documented a whole bunch of requirements. This is our first path at getting these done. So these are very likely to change at some point in the future, depending. We realize that this might be a high bar for a lot of people, but we also want to be very clear in case anybody is interested in becoming a tech lead in the future, that they kind of have a good understanding of what that path to take to look like to be eligible for it. Um, so it, uh, drop the link in the chat. Please feel free to review it. Um, there's a timeline that we want to be able to um, go through this. So I think Brandon and I, we had discussed uh, about two weeks to like let everybody familiarize themselves with what this process looks like. And then we would formally announce it and kick it off. And we're looking, I think we said about a month to collect all of the nominations and then some time for us co-chairs to go through it. Um, because we feel that there's a lot of really great folks in the community that we may not actually be aware of some of the fantastic work it is that they're doing. And we want to make sure that they're visible and they're elevated to our awareness. Did I miss anything? Nope, I think this, that's that pretty much sums it up. Any, any thoughts about it? Any questions? Um, any ideas that maybe we, we didn't include that we should include in the nomination process? I, I think a lot of us will have to go read the document, so. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. It probably so, makes sense to, um, to also cross-link what the tech lead actually does and what their responsibilities are, so that it's not just, here's how you get nominated, but here's, what do we expect people to do? Mm -hmm. It's already linked in the doc under caveats of technical leads. There is a link under have responsibilities. So that is there. Okay, perfect. Um, I also wanted to make everyone aware that we also have a tag security governance channel, which is where we have conversations about this kind of stuff uh, with the larger uh, tag security group. So if you have questions about technical leadership, um, co-chairpersonship, or just general, like the running and the administration of the group, we also have that channel. Sorry, can you say the name of the channel again? Tag, gov tag Security Governance. Brandon just posted it in the, uh, in the chat. There are a whole lot more TAC meetings that happen in a week besides this one, once you become a, a TL. Just want to let you know about it. It's like we have that huge chisel so not you're, supposed to to say, you're not supposed to say that so like you could sell it. You see, you're supposed to like hold off on that until the end. You get to see my smiling face so much and you get to get messages from me throughout the week and Brandon and Aradna as well. Sold. 
sold. That's a fun fact. Behind the scenes. And also, if folks are interested from like a career progression perspective, understanding a little bit more about managing a very large community, um, this is a good opportunity for that. So if you're interested in that space and you want to learn more about what does it mean to be a tech lead within this security um, tag or a co-chair, please feel free to reach out to any of the existing tech leads, previous tech leads, previous co-chairs, current co-chairs. We're more than happy to help talk to you about what it looks like. These are skills that you gain and can you reuse in your regular day-to-day -day careers. If you're also interested in the CNCF, CF, this gives like a very good opportunity to see about how a lot of it operates inside. Cool. Yeah. So um, we'll leave it out there. Uh, like Emily said, we are going to wait one or two weeks. Um, if we get some more feedback, we can incorporate it into the process. Um, I believe the plan now is that we will open one swap for community nomination for tech lead. Um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, if it goes well, we'll have more in the future. <laughs> um, yeah, so in about two weeks, you should get email um, for nominations and we will see how it goes. I'm very excited to see, see everyone participate in this. Awesome. So, that is the um, everything that was on today's agenda. Um, the announcement for next week's schedule is we have a presentation um, from myself and Marius on Swifty Tonyak next week. Um, so yeah, that would be exciting. That was uh, Tonyak. Give us give us a teaser. <laughs> It's a, it's a, a control plane for workflow identity. So you know how you have like all these like awesome control and management planes and UIs to control user identities and manage them. Um, the question we're asking is, why don't we treat workloads the same way as users? I mean, this is um, pretty much workloads have become a big part of um, identity access management and cloud data. Another way to put it, it's a supervisor for Spire deployments, correct? Yeah, exactly. Cool. Um, so any any other uh, thoughts, any other items that we wanted to bring up? Yes. For those of you that may not already be aware, Cloud Native Security Con is happening October 12th. Please, please, please register either in person or virtual. We have an excellent lineup with two tracks this year as well as a CTF. So stay tuned for more information about the CTF. Check your Twitters for fun little tweets about what's going on, but please, please, please register. We're trying to turn this into a much larger con around cloud native security and kind of drive the, the community in that direction. So your participation is always welcome and very appreciated. Pop, you're talking to that red button. Yep. If you see tweets, go ahead and retweet them. Get the name word out there. Uh, I think uh, myself and Andres and maybe a little Emily, I don't know, uh, will be doing some emceeing. If uh, Vega and I don't beat each other up on stage, uh, but you know, we'll have a good time together. It's going to be good. We're going to have some fun, everybody. So there's a great movie theme uh, that we're doing as well. It's, it's phenomenal stuff. I mean, again, this is the, the sum total of all of us kind of showing the world how awesome tag security is in so many ways as we do. So I'd love, you know, everybody's participation in it would be awesome. I'm just going to flag you for rule number one of Fight Club. Real <laughs> yeah, <there is> <laughs> we'll have a good time yeah but whether you're planning to be there virtually or in person uh we could use your help would love to to count with your help uh so yeah hit us up if if you'd like to get involved and you're going to be there either online or in person awesome thank you all right Seems like um, we are at the end of the meeting, so I'll give everyone 15 minutes back. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks a lot. See you all next week. Bye-bye.